Hi and welcome to Dromate. If you want to take your rudiments a step further and break out of their inherent linearity, adding flams is a great way to do that. Using flams as an embellishment in your playing is a powerful tool and is an effective way to make your ideas more dramatic and expressive, as well as give linear ideas a 3D and more rounded feel. In this video I will talk about adding flams to the four modes of the single paradiddle as an introduction for beginner players. If you don't know what I mean by modes of the single paradiddle, please refer to my previous video, The Four Modes of the Single Paradiddle. The definition of a flam is playing a grace note or a tap just before a strike with the opposing hand. We will consider the hand playing the grace note secondary, while the hand playing the strike primary. So this is the right flam and the left flam. The easiest way to think about it is tucking in a tap just before the primary hit which falls on the beat. The distance between the grace note and the main strike is open to interpretation and can vary, making a flam either flat, closed or open. A flat flam should be avoided when playing on the same surface as this makes the two hits phase each other out and create a flat sound. If the flam is too open, it doesn't really sound like a flam, rather a misplaced hit. Concerning dynamics, I would suggest using stick control or no dynamic range and not overly stressing the flam itself as the flam inherently stresses the note by default. Having said this, we can take a look at adding a flam to the beginning of each side of the single paradiddle. For the first mode, we get The first challenge is playing a right hand strike after a right flam. The easiest way to approach this is by allowing the stick to bounce up freely to make a second strike while not stressing the grace note with the left hand. Same thing will apply to the left side of the paradiddle. You could practice those separately until you get it working in both directions. If you're having a difficulty with this one, try adding one hit at a time until you get used to the sticking. So for example, play the first notes for a while, then play three notes, and keep adding the next note. A good way to practice connecting right and left side would be to play up to the fifth note until you get used to placing the right grace note just before the left main strike. Now try closing one full cycle from a right flam to a right flam. And the same in the opposite direction. Keep adding one hit at a time until you can play two full cycles, stopping on the first note of the third cycle. Do the same with the left hand lead. Now let's look at the second mode. Here we are presented with a different challenge, playing a double stroke with the left hand following a right flam. You should practice this with left lead as well. 
Once you get this working, keep adding one hit at a time, just like with the first mode, until you complete two full cycles. I often suggest to my students to play each hand on a different surface. This makes it easier for the brain to distinguish between the two overlapping parts. Not to say practice it like this, rather try it if you're having a difficulty hearing what each hand is playing. Another thing you might notice is that now there are four consecutive hits with each hand. This helped me when I was studying these, as you get used to expecting those four hits to happen and makes it harder to get lost in the rudiment. Now we can take a look at the third mode, or what I would call a natural paradiddle. Similar to the previous mode, we have four consecutive hits with each hand. Just something to keep track of as you're learning this mode. One thing that might help is practicing the transition from right hand lead to left hand lead and vice versa. The fourth mode is unique because it places the double stroke of the paradiddle on the transition between right lead and left lead. Here we're faced for the first time with the challenge of playing an inverted flam, that is playing the grace note in the middle of a double stroke with the primary hand. Again, a good approach is to practice the transition from right lead to left lead. As with the previous examples, keep adding one note at a time until you can play the fourth mode in its entirety. Closing two full cycles usually means you can keep going and play it for as long as you like. At this point in time, playing this fast is not the goal. Rather, things to watch out for are keeping the sticking honest as well as pulling the sticks up after each hit. Playing these in stick control will guarantee a steady and uniform stream of hits and will prevent some hits in the harder passages from sinking under the dynamic level of the easier parts. Some of those modes will be easier to play faster than others, but using a metronome is always a good idea. Playing at different dynamic levels will reveal weak points in your understanding of the rudiment, for example, playing them very quiet and dim as opposed to playing them loud and forced. Each dynamic level will teach you something new about the rudiment as your brain scrambles to find ways to overcome all the challenges presented by the different stickings and placement of the flams. I hope this video was useful to you, please let me know in the comments what you're having difficulty with and how I can maybe help you to resolve these issues at hand. Thanks for watching Drum Ape and see you next time.